Hey guys, so here is a quick video on how to generate a CA cert for the dedicated load balancer using Let's Encrypt. If you look through our documentation, you can see that with our dedicated load balancer, you can set a CNAME record in your DNS server uh, to mask the DNS that's provided for the dedicated load balancer, right? Uh, and generally this CNAME record would have a domain name URL that already has a CA cert. Um, but in this case, or this use case here, the idea is to go ahead and use Let's Encrypt to generate a uh, CA cert for the purpose of a POC or for just for security reasons of having a CA cert on top of the dedicated load balancer. Okay, to, so to show you an example here, I've already have a dedicated load balancer set up in my endpoint platform account. And if we drill in here, here's the endpoint that we're gonna test against or, or go ahead and set up a CA cert against. So if I navigate to this URL, um, using HTTPS, you can see that Chrome returns back an error saying that the connection is not private. And if we look at the certificate, you can see that it's a self-signed root certificate. So what we want to do is use Let's Encrypt to go ahead and generate a CA cert for the dedicated load balancer. So let's give you a little background. I'm not going to go too far into the fine details here, but I'm gonna give you a high level on how this is gonna work. So um, generally you have a web server that you wanna create a CA cert for. And what Let's Encrypt will do is that um, you have an agent on the web server that, that will go ahead and set a challenge. And then Let's Encrypt will validate that challenge and then generate a CA cert. So what we're gonna do with Mule and with the uh, dedicated load balancer is that that dedicated load balancer will act as the, um, the web server. All right, and then you're going to deploy a Mule app behind the web server or behind the dedicated load balancer that's going to go ahead and allow you to set the challenge and then also validate that against Let's Encrypt to actually generate the CA cert. So once you generate the CA cert, you're going to go ahead and upload that to the dedicated load balancer, and then you can go ahead and stop the cert bot and deploy any application beyond the firewall, and it'll have a CA cert at that dedicated load balancer level. Okay. Okay, so let's quickly look at the CertBot app. So here it is in AnyPoint Studio. You can see there's just two flows in here. So the first flow that we'll be calling later on within the demonstration is the set challenge. And this is where you're gonna go ahead and set the key value pair that Let's Encrypt will check against. So once you upload the key value pair into the object store, Let's Encrypt will call the well-known flow and validate that that key value pair exist and then generate the CA cert for you. You can go ahead and download this project from um, uh, GitHub. I have a project that's checked in here called CertBot app that you can go ahead and search for. I'll go ahead and put this within the, the video description uh, and you can go ahead and download this. This is running on Mule 4 um, and was built in Studio 7.4.x. Uh, if you have any questions or run into any issues, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Okay, so with that app, I've gone ahead and deployed that into my VPC. You can see that running here now. So before I go and uh, run the process, what we're gonna do is go into the load balancer and change the mapping to route those requests specifically to that CertBot app. So uh, let's drill into the dedicated load balancer and then for the certificate, let's go ahead and modify the rule. So let's click on edit. Uh, we'll change that all requests go to the CertBot app. So we'll change this to CertBot, leave the protocol to be HTTP, and then click on Done Editing. It's going to go ahead and validate the certificate. And then back over here, let's go ahead and apply the changes. So we'll give this a couple seconds for the dedicated load balancer to take those changes and then restart the workers. Okay, so once the uh, dedicated load balancer restarts, you can see that it gives you the green light, so we can go ahead and test against it. So we'll go to that endpoint, uh, that, that DNS name, and then uh, do forward slash set challenge, and then do key one value equals two, right? So we hit that. What it does is it goes ahead and stores that key value into the object store, and then returns that back and shows you what's in the key store. So. Um, Later on, when we run Let's Encrypt, it'll go ahead and validate to see if that key value uh, exists within the object store, okay? Okay, so uh, for Let's Encrypt, what we need to do is run the command line version of the certain cert bot. So if you're running on a Mac here, 
uh, you're going to go ahead and install CertBot. I'll include some links in the description later to kind of show you where to grab a copy of the CertBot uh, for this process. So for Mac, if you run brew install Let's Encrypt, it's going to go ahead and install Let's Encrypt, uh, the, the CertBot agent uh, locally, and you can run this um, process. Um, but I already have this installed, so it's going to go ahead and kick back a, an error saying that I have the latest and greatest. So um, what we want to do here is get the domain name that we want to generate a CA cert for. And then from our command line, we want to go ahead and run the following command. So uh, we're going to run sudo cert bot cert only manual. Uh, and then dash D and then the domain name. So when we run this, it's going to go ahead and first ask me for my um, password. So let's go ahead and type this in here. And once it validates that, it's going to go ahead and ask me that it wants to obtain a new certificate. So it's going to ask me a couple of questions. We're going to go ahead and say yes, we're okay with being logged. And then it's going to create a file with just this data, right? So this string right here is the value. And this, uh, the string here is the key. And we want to essentially have Let's Encrypt validate against this endpoint. So what we're gonna do is take this key value, come back up to the URL here, and paste that in here. And then for the value, we're gonna go ahead and copy this string and paste this into the value here and run that. And you can see now it stores that key. So um, there's that new key here and then the value is stored against that key within the object store. And then going back to the command line here, once we click on enter to continue, it's gonna go through the verification process where the uh, Let's Encrypt is gonna go ahead and validate against that. And then if it's successful, it's gonna go ahead and generate the um, uh, CA cert for you as well as the private key for that cert. So you can see here, congratulations, it's gone, it's gone ahead and saved that locally. So what we're gonna wanna head, go ahead and do is grab a copy of these uh, certs. So let's go ahead and do copy um, that cert to locally. Oops, and then we actually wanted to call that with sudo. So let's go ahead and do that again. And then we also wanna do the same for the private key. So we'll do sudo cp, the, the, the path to that specific certificate, and then tilde forward slash. So if we go ahead and look at the keys here, um, let's go ahead and make sure permissions are open for this. So uh, we wanna go ahead and make sure that the private key permissions uh, allow you to go ahead and upload this. So we wanna go ahead and run uh, shamad. 644 on, oops, uh, sorry, 644. Okay, okay, so that, that should have the correct permissions now on those files. So going back now to the dedicated load balancer, let's go ahead and add those certificates now. So in here, we'll click on add certificate. We'll choose the file and navigate to those um, certificates. And then here for the private key, we're gonna go ahead and set that to the priv key. And then we'll leave everything else default, right? So we'll leave the mapping rules the same right now and leave this and the client certificate empty. And then we're gonna go ahead and click on save certificate. So you can see now here is that certificate that we just generated from Let's Encrypt. Uh, additionally, let's go ahead and apply the changes. So we have to apply the changes first before we can uh, remove the um, previous certificate and then once we do that we can go ahead and hit the um, the new uh, the load balancer and it'll show us the correct certificate okay so changes were applied successfully um, that's gonna go ahead and restart the load balancer so we'll give it a couple of seconds here and let that refresh okay so the dedicated load balancer is back up and running you can see that it's got the two certificates still, still here uh, I'm, I'm not gonna delete the old one yet uh, additionally, I have an application that's already deployed. It's called Hello DLBS. Uh, it's essentially deployed into the VPC and it's fronted by the dedicated load balancer. So if we go and uh, go to HTTPS forward slash forward slash the load balancer um, domain name forward slash 
the app name, and then an endpoint that's exposed, and hit that this time, you can see that it returns back a response. And then if we go ahead and look at the certificate now, you can see that it actually shows us the valid certificate, right? The CA cert, and it's being uh, authenticated against the Let's Encrypt Authority, and you have a CA cert now. Okay, so uh, hopefully this gave you a quick, good overview of how to generate a CA cert. Again, if you have a um, DNS server that has a, 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 a C name record of your, you know, that's pointing to the domain name, right? That generally is already going to give you a CA cert. But if you need this for a proof of concept or for a specific use case, this is how you can generate a CA cert against the ded dedicated load balancer. Okay.